Welcome to this projection mapping tutorial that will cover three different approaches to projection mapping, starting with the most basic. We're going to be projection mapping this paper model of Thor's hammer, which we all know is called Mjolnir. It could just as easily be a cake made to the same dimension, since cake mapping is the focus of this channel. I'm going to be using MadMapper projection mapping software for this project. Since it's Thor's hammer, we're going to want to put some lightning on it eventually, so I found some free stock footage online, thank you Daniel Norris. Copy the URL and paste it into one of the many tools online that lets you grab the footage. Here it is in our download, so drag it into MadMapper. Double click on it to see it in your input and output editor side by side. Click this icon to see just the input on its own. We'll leave that sitting there and go back to the checkerboard. Bump up the count so it's more densely packed. Go to Output, Full Screen Mode, to start outputting to your projector, assuming you've already plugged it in and turned it on. Add a quad surface and the projector will output the checkerboard. Now the idea here is essentially to add a mask to the checkerboard, so that the projection is confined only to the hammer and not anywhere else. So add a mask, view your output, Under Output up here, toggle on your cursor which will make life easier by displaying a crosshair over your output to give you visual feedback of what you're doing inside the software. Now go around the hammer clicking on the boundary points to create an outline. You can be rough at this point. Close the mask by hitting Return. Over here on the left, check Invert Mask. Now you've isolated the content to the interior of your object. Go around and neaten things up if you want. MadMapper has some nice generated materials that we can play with. With the quad surface selected, double click any of the materials over here to assign them to that surface. You'll see a little tag appear displaying the number of surfaces that material is assigned to, in this case just one. So this already is quite an interesting effect and it's only taken you a few minutes, but we can really do better. I think this is one stage up from a PowerPoint presentation. You've pointed a projector at an object and restricted it to a certain area, but there's no interplay between the projected content and the physical object. In fact, you can see the hammer has even lost some of its 3D appearance because we're just blasting a 2D image on there. Projection mapping is at its best when it looks like the image wraps around the object and really conforms to its surface in 3D space. So how are we going to do that here? Disclaimer, this is a quick and dirty method, but it's still going to get you a long way towards achieving some of that projection mapping magic. The first step is going to be to take some reference photos of your object and the surfaces onto which you want to project. For this hammer, I want a shot from the front and a shot from the top. The key here is getting the photos as square on to the surfaces as possible, with as little perspective as possible. I have a tip for reducing perspective in a reference photo for people who have a camera with a zoom lens, and I'm talking about optical zoom, i.e. light is physically being bent by a glass lens, not a digital zoom. The trick is to take the picture as zoomed in as possible. It's all to do with the angle at which the light enters the camera, but the point is when a lens is zoomed right in, there will be less perspective in the photo. The more perspective you have in your reference photo, the more common sense you're going to have to apply. Physically look at your object, turn it around, inspect it, then look at your photos and try to think where there is distortion through perspective and how it really ought to look, and try to make adjustments accordingly when you create surfaces in MadMapper that describe each individual surface. I call this the quick and dirty method because of all this imprecision. Professionals will use highly accurate 3D scans or 3D models of the surfaces onto which they're going to project. Nevertheless, we're still going to get some great results using our method. As you can see, I'm creating quads and using the corner handles to bring them in line with the edges of each surface. I'm trying to apply a somewhat sensible naming system to my surfaces so things don't get too confusing. I'm going for a shorthand version of front, front upper, front lower and so on.
This upper left corner is going to require a slightly different approach because it's the first shape we've encountered that isn't a standard quadrangle. In this case, we create a new quad, come down here and check on Mesh Warping and Show Input Mesh. Now these smaller inner handles appear. Drag these into position around this corner shape. Double click your top side reference photo under images on the right and start creating surfaces for the top of the object. Select all of the surfaces and assign them a checkerboard by double clicking on it. The tag should confirm they're assigned. Right now we're viewing the input and the output side by side. As a change of plan, assign them all to the side reference instead. Select just the top surfaces and scale them down and move them to where they belong in relation to the front surfaces. It might help you to think of the hammer as having been unwrapped and laid out as a net. You need to think where would the top surface stitch up for it to make sense. Select all the surfaces again. Give them the checkerboard. Then uncheck the visibility of all but one. This stage is much easier if you deal with one surface at a time. With your chosen surface selected and viewing your output, pull the handles to move that content into position on the object. Here on the handle I'm checking on mesh warping and increasing the subdivision so that I have more points with which to manipulate the content around the curved surface of the handle. The handle needs some more TLC and I'll come back to it. We can see here that the top content is blocking the content on the handle which is not what we want. We could just move the handle surface to be above the top surface in the stack on the left. But let's use a mask instead and learn something new. With the top surface selected, check on mask and click out the points you want. Hit return to close the mask. If you want to change it and move the points, hit edit mask and pull the points around as you please. I'm going to give the handle a bit more loving by adding some more subdivisions. I don't want to move these points in the output viewer since that will distort the image. Instead, I want to be in the input viewer and move these new points to the base. Now I can start making this look a bit better. I actually ended up adding even more subdivisions to give me enough points to work with to map it the way I wanted. I also edited the mask to match my new handle base. Something else you can do here on the handle is turn on Bezier. What it does is rather than treat the subdivision points as angular junctions which creates this faceted appearance, it makes them curved instead, creating a smoother look. Bonus tip is apply soft edges to the handle. You can check it on down here and apply as much as you need.
With the mapping done, select all the surfaces and let's see how they look with some Mad Mapper materials on them. And of course there's our blue lightning we got right at the start. Now I think this looks great. Yes, it's a bit imprecise and there's some stretching and issues here and there, but overall pretty good. But I still think it could be even better. The lightning is a good start, but the other materials are generic. They look great, but they'd look good on almost anything. The best projection mapping, I think, evokes an emotional response, and it does this by using projected content that is sympathetic to its subject. This might mean visually, but also narratively or thematically. Great projection mapping is often playful with ideas of form, perspective, and positive and negative space. It's often used to tell a story about that object. If you have a 3D model of the object, creating bespoke content becomes much easier. Not only does that give you accurate dimensions and therefore guides to work to, but you can use 2D and 3D animation programs to create content for that object with your own layout and design. In fact, this is what I did with the hammer. I'm not saying this is great projection mapping. Some of my mapping is still a bit sloppy and the content isn't going to win any awards, but hopefully you can see what I mean about marrying content to an object in a way that is creative and thoughtful. Now the hammer feels like it has magic and power to it. The projection mapping is used not just as a gimmick, but as a way to enhance a viewer's response to the object. You can download the dimensions and cake cutting template of the hammer for free at the link below or you can buy the kit in my online shop, which includes my animation and the texture paper model, which you can print and make yourself. If this video helped you, please like and subscribe and stay tuned for more projection mapping and cake mapping projects.